I'm back today with all of the books that I read in March and boy was it a lot. This may have been one of the best reading months that I have ever had. Hello book friends, I'm Jen and welcome to my reading life. Today I am back with my final March reading wrap up and I read a lot of books this March more than I think I have ever read before. I'm not sure there's ever been a month that I've read this many books. Granted, I read a lot of middle grade. I listened to quite a few audiobooks and that definitely helped, but it was a fantastic reading month filled with wonderful books. And I think I just need to dive right in. I did already do a mid month wrap up and I will link that up here and also in the description box so that you can check that out. I'm not going to spend any time going over those books again. Here are some of them. Again, some were audiobooks, some were library books, so those I don't have in my possession. And I will at the end go over some of my favorites from the month and definitely some of those from my mid-month wrap-up will fall into that favorites category. But let's dive right into the books that I read in the second half of the month. The first book I'm going to talk about today is Heidi by Joanna Speary. And this is another book that I missed out on as a child for some reason. And I wish I hadn't because I know my childhood self would have just adored Heidi. I really love spunky girl characters. If you don't know the story of Heidi, uh, it is about a young girl and she is being sent to live with her grandfather who she's never met. Um, and he lives in the Swiss Alps in a very remote spot and he doesn't know she's coming and her much older, I think it's her sister, is bringing her because she can't take care of her anymore or not that she can't, she doesn't want to really take care of Heidi anymore and she's gotten a job that she really can't take Heidi with her. And so she's gonna drop her into her grandfather's lap. And the grandfather's quite cantankerous and he's a bit of a hermit, but Heidi charms him as she charms everyone. And the book takes place both in the Swiss Alps and then she returns to, hmm, I'm blanking on which big city she goes back to and spends some time there, but she's very unhappy. And it's just all about the adventure she has, the people that she meets, and just her charming little endearing self. I listened to the audiobook of this, which was absolutely fantastic. And it is 100% going to be a new favorite of mine. And I anticipate reading it possibly every year from now on. The next book that I read in March was Unnatural Death by Dorothy L. Sayers. This is the third book in the Lord Peter Whimsey mystery series. And like I've mentioned before, I do think this mystery series gets better as it goes along. And I would definitely say that I enjoyed this one more than I enjoyed the first two. Um, just slightly. I will say for this one that I did get a little bit bogged down in the middle of this story. This is set up a little bit different than the prior two mysteries in that you somewhat know what has happened and it's really just Lord Peter Whimsey trying to prove it. So it did feel to me a bit in the middle like it kind of dragged because I was just sort of waiting for them to get on with it already. Um, and so I think that slightly affected how I felt about the book as a whole, but I really enjoyed the beginning and then the pace picks up at the end incredibly and it just comes to a lovely denouement and I did enjoy that part of it. So again, it is, I think, an improvement on the first two books in the series but I am definitely looking forward to some of the later books, which I have a feeling are just going to get better and better. The next book I read was another middle grade book, and that was Because of Win Dixie by Kate D. Camillo. And this is Kate D. Camillo's very first book that she wrote. And it's such a sweet story. I really, really enjoyed this one. 
I really feel like Kate DiCamillo can do no wrong when it comes to writing middle grade books. And this is the story of Opal and she adopts a stray dog that she finds in the Winn-Dixie grocery store. And so she names him Winn-Dixie. She lives in a trailer with her father. Her father's a preacher, a very small church, and they have just moved to a new town. And Opal doesn't really have any friends. And really, this is just a beautiful story about friendship and it's a little bit melancholy and I actually really appreciated that about it. I think it's a wonderful story for children to read about how to be a friend and the meaning of friendship and how life can be sad but it can also be beautiful and I just love this one. Next up I read a middle grade graphic novel and that was Stargazing by Jen Wang. This is the story of Christine and Moon and they are unlikely friends. They are both from Chinese American families and Christine's family is very much pushing her to strive for excellence and Christine plays the violin and her parents are quite strict and Moon uh, lives with her mother. They don't have very much money. Moon is quite eccentric and she believes that there are celestial beings out in the stars that speak to her and whom she really belongs with and that she doesn't really belong on earth. And she marches to the beat of her own drummer and there's a little bit of that sort of preteen angst going on about friendships and popularity and then something very tragic strikes Moon and it sort of changes the whole dynamic of their friendship and of Moon's personality and I won't go into exactly what that is because it's a bit of a spoiler but I will say while I enjoyed this I thought the artwork was beautiful I do think this felt a little light for the subject matter. I do feel like I wanted it to be a little bit more flushed out than it was given what we were dealing with here. While it might be good for a middle grader to read this book as an adult, I just felt like it was lacking a little something. So um, well written for what it was, but left me wanting more. The next book I read was another middle grade, and that is Wonder by R.J. Palacio. And this is the story of Augie and his family. He was born with some facial differences, and um, as a result, he has never gone to mainstream school, mostly because he's had to have numerous, numerous surgeries to try to correct um, the different things going on with his face, which I think also have affected like his ability to speak and eat and breathe. And so, um, but finally he has sort of gotten to a point where there is a lull in those surgeries and his parents feel like maybe it's time for Augie to go to mainstream public school. And so we get to meet Augie, meet his parents and his sister and then some of the people that he becomes friends with at school. But I will say that it did take me a bit to get invested in the story and I wasn't wholly drawn in at first by Augie himself and it wasn't until I got to the section that's told from his sister's point of view that I really sort of started to get deep into the story and really feel like I was living in this world of Augie and what he was going through and how that affected the people around him. So it wasn't quite a five-star read for me, but fairly close to that. The next book I read was another audiobook, and that was The Children of Green No by Lucy M. Boston. And I really enjoyed this. This is a classic children's book, and it is the story of a young boy whose name is escaping me at the moment, who uh, goes to live with his, I think his great grandmother in Green No and on her old crumbling estate. And uh, she is a fantastic character in this book. And then he discovers that there are some ghosts living in this house and they are the ghosts of three young children who lived there long, long ago and uh, died, I believe, of some either influenza or plague or smallpox or something like that, scarlet fever. And uh, they are still haunting the grounds of Green No and 
he sort of gets to know them and befriends them and they have adventures and this is actually i actually wish i had read this in december i think it would be a perfect book to read in the lead up to christmas a lot of it takes place it takes place over the sort of winter holidays and over christmas and it would be the perfect read for that time of year and this is the start of a series actually and i'm definitely going to read more in this because i really enjoyed it it was such a fun read and a great listen it made a wonderful audiobook and i definitely recommend it the next book that i read was a reread for me and that was family happiness by Lori colwin and i buddy read this with my friend elizabeth and we had such a lovely discussion of this book. It has been decades since I first read this. And Family Happiness is about Polly and she is a wife and mother leading sort of a, on the surface, very perfect life. Uh, she comes from this family where she's sort of the dutiful daughter and does all the right things and you know she's the perfect hostess and the perfect wife and mother and she does all the right things and she's always doing things for other people and then it turns out that Polly has fallen in love with another man and is having an affair with him and it's not that she wants to leave her husband for him she still does love her husband very much and it's all about the complexities of that relate those relationships and of Polly being very torn with all of the guilt and sadness that she feels about having this affair and how that is affecting her and the, her relationships and her family and how she sort of comes into her own and really discovers who she is and who she wants to be in this book. Lori Colwin just writes, her prose is just fantastic. I'm gonna read you just a little excerpt because I don't think a lot of people know Lori Colwyn. I think once you hear Lori Colwyn's prose, you'll understand what I love so much about her. So we're talking about Polly in this excerpt. No one had ever asked her to be efficient, enterprising, to set such a good table or run such an attractive household. It always surprised Polly that other women who were not so good at making things sweet, whose households were not so sparkling and comfortable, whose children were not so well turned out, behaved as if they too deserved love. And I just think, again, that's just, she just sort of is so insightful and really gets at the heart of human behavior and human emotions and what it's like to be in love, even if that love feels like it's not right. And she's just wonderful. <laughs> Can't say enough good things. The next book I read was another middle grade book, another sort of classic middle grade book. And that is The Witch of Blackbird Pond by Elizabeth George Spear. And I actually ended up listening to this on audiobook. And I'm really glad that I did. The audiobook was fantastic. I talked about this book in my video of my March TBR and so many people said how wonderful this book was and you were all 100% right. I loved this book and again like I mentioned before when I was talking about Heidi how I love a sort of intrepid, spunky, uh, feisty young girl. Kit is 100% that kind of girl and I can't believe I didn't read this when I was a child because I know I would have adored this. Um, my, my childhood self was very much put off by the looks of books. I definitely judged a book by its cover when I was a child and I have a feeling that the Witch of Blackbird Pond cover from the 1980s was maybe not something that was drawing me in. And if you don't know The Witch of Blackbird Pond, in this we follow Kit. She has grown up in the Caribbean um, and she's been living there with her grandfather on their estate, but her grandfather has passed away and he has a lot of debts. And as a result, Kit has left her home in the Caribbean and is traveling to New England to uh, go live with her aunt, her mother's sister. Her mother has passed away many years before and um, she gets there unbeknownst to them that she is actually coming <laughs> and it's all about her joining them in their very Puritan New England town and how she sort of disrupts things with her very um, 
modern, <laughs> non-Puritan ways of looking at the world. She puts herself in jeopardy, she puts others in jeopardy, not really intentionally, but she's very impetuous and she's really trying to do the right thing. And sometimes that means doing what is wrong according to the Puritans. And so she gets herself into some hot water as a result of that. I found this gripping, I found the story so compelling and I just couldn't stop listening to it and I, completely understand why everyone loves it and now I love it too. The next book I read because of a book that I talked about in the first half of my March wrap-up which was Some Writer which was a middle grade biography of E.B. White and as a result I finally picked up The Trumpet of the Swan by E.B. White and read it. I have read of course Charlotte's Web multiple times. It was one of my favorite childhood books and I've read Stuart Little as well and just had never read The Trumpet of the Swan but I really enjoyed this one. This we follow Lewis who is a trumpet swan who doesn't have a voice and trumpet swans are obviously known for the trumpeting sound that they make and Lewis uh, befriends Sam Beaver, the little boy here in this picture. And it's all about how Lewis goes about figuring out how to find his voice and find his place in the society of trumpet swans, really. And we follow Lewis on many, many adventures, which I won't go into because I think it's super fun just to dive into this and go along with Lewis and see where it takes him. I loved Lewis's father. He was so blustery and long-winded and given to making these long, grandiose speeches, and it was just hilarious. And uh, yes, I'm definitely having a bit of a love affair with E.B. White right now, and it is just wonderful. The next book that I read was a mystery, and I am not sure where I first started hearing about this series. This is a very old series. It was first published in, let me see here, 1966. So a very old mystery series. It's one I've heard about for sure over the years and just never thought to pick it up. And then over the past couple of months, I started hearing people talking about it. And so I found the first three books online and decided to order them. And I am so glad that I did. I read the first book this month and that was The Unexpected Mrs. Polifax by Dorothy Gilman. Uh, Mrs. Polifax is such a fun character. So the setup for the story is Mrs. Polifax is a widow and she's in her 60s and she sort of just doesn't really know what she wants to do with her life. She feels like, you know, she does lots of volunteer work and different things, but it's not really satisfying to her and she wants to do something maybe a little bit more with her life. And she decides one day to go down to CIA headquarters and to apply to be a spy <laughs> for the CIA. And she basically walks in and they're sort of like, hmm, okay. And then it turns out they're actually waiting for another woman to come in who they need to basically be a courier um, to go down to Mexico City and to bring back something. They're looking for someone who could pull off being an American tourist. And they mistake Mrs. Polifax for this other woman. And by the time they realize that, they've already decided that should be perfect for this job. So she ends up uh, going to Mexico City um, and just acting as a tourist. But then at the end of her time there, she is supposed to go to this bookstore and pick up a package and take it back with her. And uh, she decides to check out the bookstore in advance because she's feeling a little nervous about things. And as a result of this, she gets sort of embroiled in something much bigger than she expected. And uh, you, the story just goes from there. It was so much fun. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. And I was watching Emily's video the other day and she mentioned that I prompted her to pick up the third book 
book in this series, but then she mentioned that um, there is a movie of the first book starring Angela Lansbury, and I am 100% going to track that down. And I have the next two books on my shelf, and I'm going to get to them very soon because I am a huge fan of Mrs. Polifax now, and I want to read the entire series, and I cannot recommend this enough. So, so fun. A very slim little mystery, but it packs a punch for sure. The next book I read was the group read pick for Middle Grade March, and this was selected by the hosts of Middle Grade March, and this is a nonfiction middle grade book, and that is The Mona Lisa Vanishes by Nicholas Day. And this is the true story of when the Mona Lisa was stolen from the Louvre. Uh, this was in, I think, around 1911, something like that, early 1900s. And the Mona Lisa was not the famous painting that it was today. It was hanging in the Louvre, but it was just picked up off the wall and a man walked out with it. And this is the story of exactly what happened. And the book goes back and forth. It talks about Leonardo da Vinci and gives you sort of his history and background and the lead up to his um, painting, The Mona Lisa. And you just get to learn a lot about him, which I actually think was really interesting. And I think especially reading this as a child when you probably don't know that much about Leonardo da Vinci is an important part of the story and helps give you context about the Mona Lisa and then the heist really makes you understand why it's the famous painting that it is today. So this was so much fun. If you like narrative nonfiction, I highly, highly recommend this and the illustrations in this are just fantastic. Let me find one for you. So yes, wonderfully illustrated by Brett Helquist, and I definitely recommend this. Thank you so much to uh, the hosts of Middle Grade March for bringing this book to my attention. I never would have discovered it otherwise. The next book I read was my pick for Read Christie 2024 for March, and we were supposed to read another book uh, written or published in the 1920s, and so I decided to read Partners in Crime, which is the second Tommy and Tuppence book. And this book actually is sort of a series of interconnected stories. There is an overarching story going on in that Tommy and Tuppence are asked to take over this, like, private detective agency that is being run for maybe some nefarious purposes and the British government want Tommy and Tuppence to come in and help sort out the baddies that are involved in this detective agency. So that's sort of the overarching story and then in the midst of that you get them solving um, crimes for the people who come into the detective agency for legitimate reasons. And so there's a number of kind of like short stories within the overarching um, plot of the book as a whole. And I enjoyed this one. I really do love Tommy and Tuppence's banter back and forth. And Tommy likes to take on the persona of different famous detectives. And he might at the end of this book take on a very famous Belgian detective that we all know and love. <laughs> and so that's kind of fun and Tuppence always sort of just like plays along with him and um, you know she's so insightful and you know Tommy can sometimes go off on these tangents and Tuppence is very good at sort of you know reining him back in and making sure he stays on the right path that they need to go on. So I'm enjoying working my way through the Tommy and Tuppence novels. I don't think I've read really any more of them. I'd have to look at my list, but um, I'm definitely looking forward to reading some more of them this year, hopefully. So this was a fun one. And then the very last book that I read in March was another book that I missed out on in my childhood. And that was Anne of Avonlea by L.M. Montgomery. I read Anne of Green Gables. Mm, it's been a number of years now since I read Anne of Green Gables. And then I was gifted this beautiful set of the first three books um, a few years ago for Christmas. And, you know, it's just like anything. You always are meaning to get to certain books. And finally, I was like, 
yes, there was a prompt for middle grade March and this one fit it to a T and I'm like, I'm finally going to read this one. And I really took my time with it. I read it slowly over the month of March. It didn't rush it. I love Ella Montgomery's writing. Her descriptions of Prince Edward Island are just wonderful. It definitely makes me want to go there and visit it at some point. It did take me a little bit to get into the beginning of it. It felt a bit like there were like vignettes kind of being stuck together right at the beginning and it didn't feel like it was all kind of cohesive. Um, and you know, that was fine and I was enjoying it. But once Miss Lavender comes into the story, I was utterly hooked. <laughs> I do love a little old lady who lives in a cottage on the outskirts of town, apparently, because that was a theme this month. Uh, there were definitely a number of characters like that in the books that I read, and Anne of Avonlea was no exception. And I loved her. I loved her storyline. It was just it was so satisfying. And I love the end of this one, and I'm really looking forward to moving on in the Anne of Green Gables series. So hopefully I will get to Anne of the Island this year as well. So it was a wonderful way to finish out my March reading. Okay, that was it. And if you can believe it, I read 25 books in March, which is unheard of. <laughs> I do not even know how I did it. I just got on such a good roll, particularly with middle grade books. I read just some fantastic books. I thought I'd go through really quickly the prompts for middle grade March and which books I read that fell into each prompt. So there were five prompts for middle grade March and the first prompt was a debut novel. And for that one, I read Because of Winn-Dixie by Kate D. Camillo. And this was just wonderful, loved it. The next prompt was a book you missed out on, and that's the book I just talked about, which was Anne of Avonlea. There are a number of books that I read this month that could have qualified for that, but Anne was the one that I picked out originally, so I'm going to stick with it because I definitely feel like I missed out. <laughs> and then for a refugee or immigrant story, I had read Esmeralda Rising, which I talked about earlier in my uh, mid-March wrap-up and I definitely enjoyed Esmeralda and I'm so glad that I read that story again. Another sort of spunky, plucky, intrepid young girl and I really liked Esmeralda. And the next prompt was to read a book with an animal on the cover and it was one of the first books I read in the month and that was The Highly Trained Dogs of Professor Petit by Carol Ryrie Brink. And a buddy read this with Kate Howe and it was just such a lovely little story. I love Carol Ryrie Brink's writing. I need to read more of her work because I just adore her so much. Gaddy Woodlawn was one of my favorite books as a kid and I need to read much, much more. And then the last prompt was a one word title. And for that, I had a number of books to choose from actually, but I am picking Heidi, uh, which was by far one of my favorite books that I read in March. So I had so much fun reading this month, both for middle grade March and also for March Mystery Madness. I read four mysteries this month for March Mystery Madness. I read Footsteps in the Dark by Georgette Hare. I listened to Death of a Charming Man by M.C. Beaton on audio. I read, of course, Partners in Crime by Agatha Christie. And the fantastic The Unexpected Mrs. Polifax by Dorothy Gilman. This is definitely the best of the mysteries that I read in March by far. <laughs> Other favorites from this month outside of Mrs. Polifax and Heidi. I really adored Regarding the Fountain by Kate Kleiss. I talked about this in my mid-March wrap-up. Such a fun little epistolary style book. I also really enjoyed Some Writer, the story of E.B. White by Melissa Sweet. This is such a wonderful illustrated biography of E.B. White and I can't recommend it enough. It is just lovely. And if you don't know that much about E.B. White, this is a great way to learn about him. I also have to put A Kind of Paradise by Amy Rebecca Tan into my favorites for this month. Uh, any book lover should absolutely read this book. It is about a young girl who has to work in the library over the summer and it's just wonderful. 
And I will definitely add The Witch of Blackbird Pond as another new favorite of mine. I just loved this and the audio experience was fantastic. And then I did reread a few books that were absolutely favorites. I listened to All of a Kind Family on audio and absolutely loved it. And I also read Family Happiness by Lori Colwin, as I mentioned, another favorite for sure. Okay, that was a lot. I read so many books this month. It was fantastic. I'm definitely going to rein it in a little for April, I think. Slow things down. There's no way that I will read 25 books in April. <laughs> if I even read half of that, it would be amazing. I would love to hear from you in the comments. Have you read any of the books that I have talked about in this video? Did you love them? What did you read in March and absolutely love? Anything you'd like to recommend to me or anything else bookish that you would like to talk about? I do love chatting with you all in the comments. And if you could hit that like button and subscribe if you are not already subscribed to my channel and would like to see more bookish content from me. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching and supporting my channel. And I'll be back with another video very soon. Bye.